Today on the show, we have James Turk, founder and director of Gold Money. He recently announced his retirement back in November, but he has just put out a new book called The Money Bubble, What to Do Before It Pops. He joins me now from London. James Turk, Happy New Year. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, Hi, Daniela. How are you? So, James, before we get started, I'm sure everyone can't wait to get your thoughts on gold as we start this new year. I want to congratulate you on your great career and how has retirement been treating you? Well, it's been busy because uh, John and I, John Rubino and I wanted to get our book out as soon as possible because there's been so much going on in the past year or so, not only affecting gold, but also affecting stocks, which, you know, continue to climb higher and higher. And they're all coming because they're all rising. Uh, stocks are rising because of the Federal Reserve. It continues this, pos, uh, this policy of money printing. Uh, and this money has to go somewhere. And it's going into the stock market. The big surprise for me in 2013 was that it didn't go into gold. And we'll get to that in a bit, James. But first, let's take a deeper look at your book, which details how paper currencies will soon stop functioning as money. James, if paper currencies do collapse, what would be the replacement? Yeah, typically, you'll go back to sound money, which means gold or silver. Um, you know, there's a difference between money and a money substitute. We use these fiat currencies today, national currencies backed by nothing except government promises, as a money substitute. But they're all based on credit. They don't really pay for goods and services. You know, you have to actually produce goods and services to pay for goods and services. If, you know, you're a shopkeeper and I go buy something from you and promise to pay next week, you've not been paid uh, until you actually get some kind of good or service. Even if you accept fiat currency, until you take that fiat currency and buy some good or service with it, you have payment risk. And that's the problem with fiat currencies today. This payment risk is growing and growing because of fiscal policies by governments, which are uh, creating too much debt, and the monetary policies of central banks around the world, not just the Federal Reserve, that are turning this debt into currency. So, James, how could people protect themselves from a currency collapse? Gold and silver uh, and tangible assets of all sorts. Um, you know, it's better to have money into things than to have money in the bank. If you look at what's happening in the collectibles market, or for example, real estate in, in certain places around the world, like here in London, uh, prices are going sky high because people who have money recognize that you can pay $100 million for an Andy Warhol picture because there aren't going to be any more of those Andy Warhols produced. It's going to maintain its value. But if you hold dollars in the bank and you see what the central bank is doing, or if you hold euros in the bank uh, and you see what the ECB is doing, those dollars or those euros are constantly being debased by more money printing by central banks. So, James, how much of an allocation would you put towards gold and silver? Well, it depends on each per uh, person's situation. I have a rule of thumb that the older you get, the more gold and physical gold and silver we're talking about now, not paper gold or silver, the more you should own. So if you're 30, you should have 30% of your portfolio in gold and silver. If you're 75, you should have 75% of your portfolio in gold and silver because you want to be conservative. Uh, it's conservative owning a physical metal. It's not, being, it's not conservative owning uh, money in a bank. So that sounds like a huge allocation. I'm thinking 75 years old, 75%. That's a lot, James. Well, that's what creates the money bubble. You know, perceptions have changed. Gold has been money for 5,000 years, but now all of a sudden we think it's an investment or it has no utility. But the reality is that gold does the same thing it does today as it did you know, hundreds of years ago. It preserves purchasing power over long periods of time and does that without any counterparty risk. It's not based on some bank's promise or some government's promise. promise. It's based on its thousands of years of history as use as money. It's based on what the market understands money to be. So we saw gold futures drop 28% in 2013, James. That was the lowest level since 1981, which left many questioning a gold's function as a hedge. So you stick to these high allocations despite the drop we saw in 2013. Yeah, well, you know, investing and more generally portfolio management is not a 100-meter sprint. It's a marathon run. And you have to look not just 2013, but you have to look going back to at least 2000, when all of these policies that central banks are pursuing started being put into place, and you had 12 years of gold rising, so one down year, even down 25%, is not that bad in the scheme of things. And over that 13-year period of time, on average, gold has appreciated 14% per annum on average, uh, and you know that makes it one of the best asset classes over the past you know 13 years. Keep in mind too, Daniela, that after the 2008 financial collapse. You know, gold dropped 25% then, 
And all, within two years, it made new highs because of central bank money printing. On the topic of central banks, James, we've seen now Janet Yellen sworn in as the next Fed chair. Yellen is known to be a dove. Do you think her policies may be different from Bernanke's and ultimately help the U.S. dollar? Or do you think it could lead to a collapse of the American currency? I do expect a collapse of the American currency. And that's what John Rubino and I concluded in the coming collapse of the dollar, the first book we wrote back in 2004. You know, we had two major investment ideas in that book. One was to bet against the housing bubble. Uh, houses were in a bubble. And secondly, to buy gold. They've worked out to be, you know, two of the best, in, uh, best investment ideas of that decade. You know, we've come back in the money bubble and we've basically reconfirmed some key points. And one of the key points is that central banks only know one thing. They only know how to print. It goes back to something Richard Russell, who's a, you know, an excellent newsletter writer and has been around for uh, year, decades and decades, a very, very experienced individual. He came up with the phrase inflate or die. It's a very simple phrase, but that ex basically explains the Federal Reserve and how it operates. It has to continue to inflate Otherwise, the monetary system is going to collapse. But the point is, at some point, the accumulated inflation causes people to lose confidence in the currency and they move to other alternatives. And I think that's what's likely going to happen to the dollar and probably not in, too in the too distant future for the simple reason that all 2008 did is they did not solve the problem. They just kicked the can down the road. But the, ultimately, the, the piper has to be paid. And I think that's going to happen pretty soon. So, James, here we are at the start of a brand new year. I know in your mid-year review on your website, you said there were three key things that we had to watch in 2013. They included the Federal Reserve balance sheet starting to grow, the yield on the 10-year T-notes climbing above 2%, and the gold and silver ratio falling below 50. Uh, are you still watching out for these three things uh, in 2014? Now, actually, those are the three, th three key things everybody should be watching in 2014 as well. Um, the Federal Reserve will continue to grow its balance sheet, meaning it's printing more dollars than the market really needs or wants. Those dollars have to go somewhere, and they went into the stock market last year. The correlation uh, to uh, gold broke down last year, but I think that's going to return uh, this year, and you're going to see a lot of catching up by the gold price. So I really do expect this will be a very good year for gold and silver, just like it had been in the previous 12 years uh, prior to 2013. And that's where I want to end on now, James, is your outlook for gold and silver uh, for this year. Uh, obviously, you feel positive towards these two metals. Do you have a trading range that you're looking at for gold? Well, I've been an advocate saying that gold is going to go over $2,000 an ounce. I've been saying this for a couple of years. It hasn't happened yet. But, you know, I'll go back into, you know, early part of the decade, you know, when I was saying gold was going to go above 500 when it was at 300. It's really not too difficult to understand why it's going higher when you look at what central banks are doing. So as long as the central banks around the world continue to print, and I see no indication that they're about to stop, you're going to see a higher gold price. And whether it happens this year or next year is not really the relevant thing. The relevant thing is, is whether or not you own enough physical metal uh, just to protect yourself when currencies do collapse. And James, towards the end of the year, we did see better economic data emerge from the U.S. And there was that sentiment that Perhaps the recovery is really in full force now. What do you make of these numbers that we saw? Well, you know, John uh, and I dealt with some of these numbers specifically in the book. And our conclusion was that a lot of these numbers really are fictitious. Uh, and we analyze why they are fictitious. Uh, the unemployment rate, it looks better simply because people are dropping out of the employment um, force, for example. But, you know, people still have to work. And ultimately, economy is based on people working and interacting with one another. So if you have less people working, you're going to have a weak economy. And that's exactly what's happening in the United States and indeed most countries around the world. So I don't really see any economic recovery in the U.S. And if the economy does weaken, uh, then you're going to have more banking problems. And any of these issues could spark a much higher price in gold. And besides gold and silver, is there any other asset or investment you're looking at this year? Well, I, you know, I'm a, my expertise is in the precious metals, uh, so I, I really don't get into other areas. But I will say that the stock market generally will continue to rise as long as the central bank continues to print money. That money has to go somewhere. There is one other thing that people, I think, should look at. Uh, I am um, a believer in cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin being the most popular one. And I do think that Bitco uh, cryptocurrencies are something that everybody should be looking at, um, not necessarily as a store of value, but as a technological innovation that I think is going to change global commerce uh, in the years ahead.
On that note, thanks so much, James. Best of luck with your new book and enjoy retirement. Thank you very much. Look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Absolutely. And thanks so much for watching this edition of On The Spot. We'll have more for you. Wishing you all good things for this new year. Happy trading. Email us any questions you may have at newsfeedback at or follow me on Twitter at Daniela Camboni. Thanks for watching.